Hello and welcome to another video lecture from MrWatkins.com. This is the video part two of the uh, protein synthesis uh, model, the simulation that we're running through. Um, this one will be on translation. Part one was on transcription and this particular video um, you're probably going to need some pieces from a kit that we put together or that I have there at the school. Um, but you can certainly follow along as we go through this process. When we left transcription, we had um, this mRNA molecule with its innerons out, so the exon, the one that's going to be um, red, all ready to go. And this molecule was formed in the nucleus. It was made by RNA polymerase off of a sequence of DNA. And so once that's done and it's ready to be read, it needs to go to the cytoplasm, specifically to a ribosome that's out there in the cytoplasm. So you should uh, have the ribosome here. So here's our ribosome. Now there are really four pieces, four things that are required or needed by um, or needed by this process to actually read the mRNA and come up with those uh, amino acid sequences. So the ribosome is one, your mRNA is another one, your amino acids, there's one there, here's another one here, that's also required, and you also need some transfer RNA. So let's talk about the transfer RNA first here and the, um, the uh, uh, mRNA, the messenger RNA. Now transfer RNA um, if you notice, it just has three letters here. It's got um, U, A, and U. Now these three letters are complements to three letters that are found on the mRNA. Now the three letters on an mRNA, and so our first three here is A, U, G. That is called a codon. This is the actual word, if you will, that's read and translated to an amino acid, and it's translated by this transfer RNA, this tRNA. Now, this tRNA would not go here because it doesn't have the right complements. It's got the A and the U right, but this last one isn't right. So this one would not la uh, land here. This tRNA would have its own very special amino acid on it. So let's kind of look at what that is. Now, in AP and IB, you're going to learn about what charging an amino acid is and how that thing works. But um, we need to kind of talk about the process here just real briefly so that you get an understanding. These tRNAs are out there in the cytoplasm and they have an amino acid attached to the end of it here. Now you have this amino acid code or excuse me this mRNA to amino acid codon chart um, and this thing is basically the Spanish English dictionary if you will. It's the translation piece for uh, the process. So here's our uh, mRNA with AUG on it Okay, so AUG, we could find that codon here in the mRNA. So here's our A, here's our U, and here's our G, AUG. So this codon binds to a uh, tRNA that has the amino acid. Now, the chart, the codon chart, is for mRNA. But what we need to do is figure out what amino acid goes here on the end. Well, how can we do that? Well, just walk through here. AUG, AUG is for methionine. Well, we don't have that complement. What would be our complement then for this particular one? This tRNA would be um, U, A, and C. And we do have a tRNA that has U, A, and C on it. And so U, A, and C, this particular one is going to have methionine attached to it. So here's my methionine amino acid. Remember the amino acid's got an amine group and a carboxylic group. It also has a hydrogen and then this variable R group attached to it. Look at valine here, another one that we have. Here's our central carbon, amine group, carboxylic acid group, and then this different um, R group here at the top makes it valine. But because AUG, its complement, excuse me, UAC, its complement is AUG, that means this tRNA somewhere out in the cytoplasm at one time had, and we're going to do it right now, we're going to charge it by adding on its correct amino acid right there with a paper clip, and we've added it to the 
OH group on the carboxylic acid. This is called charging the tRNA, and this is done out in the cytoplasm. So this particular one happens to be done. Let's go back to our original. We had UAU. Well, the complement to that, the codon that that would be attached to, would have to be AUA. So we look down here, there's A, there's U, there's A. So what attaches to this should be isoleucine, and here it is. Here's our isoleucine. Again, we've got our amine group, our carboxylic acid group, our variable R group. The long part of the tRNA attaches where this hydroxyl is in the carboxylic acid. So we're going to just attach that right there. And then this amino acid, or excuse me, this tRNA is charged and ready to be used to make a protein. We've got four others here, so let's just go ahead and do each one. Here we've got GUG. Well, the complement to that would be CAC. Remember, we're looking for the complement because this reads codons, not anticodons. So our complement here would be C and A and C. So this one should be histidine, and we do have a histidine in the packet here, and it's kind of hard to see because it's yellow. But again, it's going to attach to the carboxylic acid side there. And so this one has all been charged and ready to be used to make a protein. Our next one here is CAU. Again, this is the anti-codon that would go on one of the codons on mRNA. But to figure out, to get this charge, to figure out what amino acid goes here, we need to find the GUA um, piece. So here we got GUA. This is valine. GUA. Here's our valine molecule. Again, our variable R group, our carboxylic acid or amine group. The tRNA gets attached to the carboxylic acid side. And for pre-AP, really all you need to know is the fact that this is the anti-codon. It is the actual codon that we use to make the translation with, or at least we fig try to figure it out with, and that the valine is attached to it, and that this just happens out in the cytoplasm. You don't need to know much any more than that. When you take AP or IB, we're going to get into a lot more detail. Now, here's another one. It's G and G and G. That's the anti-codon on this transfer RNA, tRNA. tRNA is always different than mRNA because mRNA has a bunch of bases, where tRNA only has these three, this anti-codon. What this one needs to line up with would be CCC. That would be the codon, and there it is, and it's for proline. And I've got my proline uh, amino acid here. And again, our variable R group, our carboxylic acid, and our amine group. This always lines up and attaches to the carboxylic acid side here. So let's go ahead and attach that. There we go. Doesn't want to attach. Hold on here. Okay, so it's somewhat attached. There we go. So that one is ready to be used as well. And then our last one that we've got to do that's in the kit is CCU, anti-codon. We need to know what the codon is so we can find the right amino acid to charge it. That's going to be GGA. So here we go. There's G. And our second base is G, so we got to go over here to our second base, and A, and so this one is going to be glycine. And glycine then, again, with the carboxylic acid group, that's where this is going to attach. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it right here. 